So today I'm hoping to swap out the heating element for the refrigerator before I take it to the RV place to do the safety recall kit. I'm hoping I can at least do that part. I don't think it's that bad to swap this out, but I've never done anything like this before, so. But I have seen a YouTube video on it, so that pretty much makes me an expert. It took about 10 minutes, so the way I figure it, if this works, it saves me 125 bucks. If it doesn't work, I'm out 10 minutes. So that's right, I said $125 an hour. That's what a lot of RV places charge you for repairs. A minimum of one hour at $125 an hour. So it took me 10 minutes, it'd probably take them five, but I guarantee they still would've charged me 125 for that. So it's 43.7 right now. I can hear it doing something. I mean, I'm not an expert on heating elements, but if I was a bad heating element, I mean, I think this is what I would look like. It's been almost two hours. I'm gonna check the fridge and see if this thing's working. I can definitely hear it. Hear it doing something. So, let's see. The coldest this thing has ever gotten, I think it's been like 35 before, and that's because it was like 25 degrees outside. So, let's see. And it was 40. 3.7 I believe last time so 19 awesome the bottom is not quite where I'd like for it to be yet but it's definitely getting colder and so I mean I know it's working and it wasn't doing that before I mean the top did not get that cold just gotta get the safety recall stuff done on the fridge then our fridge should be done and I mean this thing should be good to go at least functionality wise i mean we still got a lot of cosmetic stuff to do but it should be livable i'd say once i get the fridge ready so this will be our first time towing the airstream with the van and so i know there'll be some modifications as far as the ball height hopefully it won't be too bad just looking at it yeah because it was on my dad's four by four before this so it's looking like it's going to be pretty low <laughs> i'm thinking that's going to need to come up one or two notches Low profile of the Airstream can be annoying sometimes when you're towing, I'm sure, but as far as raising and lowering the stabilizer jacks, it's like crazy fast and easy. Especially compared to like the fifth wheel we had, just because it's already so low to the ground. Anyways, I don't have the tools to take this off, so I'm gonna have to run to Lowe's and buy what I need. Not a big deal, it's about 10 minutes away. And then I'm gonna raise this up. We're gonna get it out of here. I haven't found that random pop. The campground, there is no way. I was gonna get that thing. I can't believe it was that tight. It was insane. I cannot wait until I get a backup camera installed on this thing. I'm gonna get one installed on the back of the Airstream too, likely, because I have to do a lot by myself with uh, Marissa and Hensley. I mean, so far it's towing good. Uh, the noise level in here is not that bad. I, I can tell it's behind me as far as pulling it with the van. It's not like I have to really use a lot of force with the van to be able to pull it, so that's really good too. But, I mean, all in all, it's doing really well. Granted, this thing's empty, the van's empty, <laughs> and the Airstream's empty. This is as easy as it's gonna get. So if, uh, if I was towing it on this run and things were rough, then I'd be pretty concerned. <laughs> So we have tried and tried and tried to make it on our propane. Um, we've been on empty for like a week probably. And the hope was that we could push it and not have to go leave our site and go fill out with propane because eventually we're gonna have to move this motorhome off the site anyways and we were just gonna fill it up with propane as we took it probably to my parents' house where I'm gonna store it while we're trying to sell it. Um, so that was the plan just to get sort of a two-in-one deal there but we're not quite ready to move into the airstream because we're waiting on the refrigerator to be repaired still. So we're stuck spending a couple hours taking the motor home and filling it with propane. It's pros and cons to everything. Travel trailers, fifth wheels, you get to take the tanks, you don't have to take your whole RV. 
motorhomes, either you have to find somebody who can deliver to where you're at, which they don't do here in Cookville, um, or you have to buy an attachment, attach an outside tank, which I didn't want to do because I thought we could squeeze by. Or option three is doing what we're doing, packing it up, sliding everything in, going into town, getting some propane. Oh, and another slide hurdle. Um, it monsooned last night and they still have not put any gravel down for us at our site. It's like 66 bucks to fill up the propane tank. So it's not terribly bad, especially in the summer. We make it, you know, three plus months on one tank of propane, usually with the RV. <laughs> it's just a pain to pack everything up and come out here like this. And we've got a tractor supply. I know they always fill it. So if you got a tractor supply, I mean, that's the best price in town for what we have. The place that actually supplies propane for tractor supply is even more expensive than tractor supply. So I don't know how that works, but whatever. <laughs> Pulling in and out of the site after an extremely rainy night did not go without notice, I guess. I did talk to the owner and let him know, said, look, we're out of propane. Because he, he talked about graveling this area, you know, since we, since we got here. And uh, it still hasn't happened. So he said, just go for it. I'll clean up whatever mess you make. So uh, we definitely, uh, definitely made a mess. There are ruts all over this thing. It took forever to get this thing straightened because I kept digging into ruts as I tried to straighten it even on the gravel, but uh, not ideal, but also not ideal for the wife not to get a hot shower. So Sometimes it's two steps forward and one step back with RV stuff. I mean, we got the, got the Airstream moved, got the Class A moved. But when we tried to put the steps out in the Class A, we weren't paying attention to how close to the ground we were and when the steps had to force themselves up against the ground, it uh, burned out the motor. So I've checked to make sure that it's not like just dislodged, or it's not making a good connection. It's, it's coming on, it's trying, but it just never even has enough power to turn the mechanism to make the steps go up and down. Uh, even when there is clearance, I've jacked the RV up enough where there's plenty of clearance and it no longer moves the steps in or out. So, so I've got that part on the way get that fixed. So hopefully I can get the refrigerator fixed, the steps fixed, and then move on to other projects. So we do have a lot going on with our move, downsizing, the van, um, but I think it, it's going to be good. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's going to get, life is going to get simpler for us is kind of what we're hoping for. Um, so that's kind of the end, end result. So maybe it just has to get maybe a little bit crazy first before it can start settling down some. But. Well, I think anytime you clean up, it gets messy before it gets better. So that's kind of how we're viewing it too. And on top of the transition, I know we had opened up to you guys about our infertility issues and how we had an IUI done and we've been making all these trips to Nashville and unfortunately it did not work this time. So kind of starting again it's a, a new month so um we're just trying to make big decisions not only in the rv life but in the personal life of growing our family and it's hard sometimes but we're just super blessed and happy and we got we got this little chickadee Potty. You see the potty, but you don't use the potty, do you? No. <laughs> no. So we're just getting a new game plan together. And just one month at a time. Which is all we can do right now. It's yeah. just... Sometimes when you think ahead to the future, it gets really overwhelming. It's been the same thing with the RV. You start thinking about everything you have to do or the future and you get overwhelmed. But if you just start thinking about what can I do right now... 
and we'll get there. And Marissa wrote a great post on our website called Living in the Moment, um, and it talks about some of this stuff where it's just, you want so bad to be in a different stage of your life, but at the same time, you've got to be able to just really savor where you're at in the moment. Um, you know, we'll never have this same exact day with our daughter again or as a couple. Sometimes we get so focused on what's next and mm -hmm. what we want in the future that we're not really living in the moment. And I don't want the moment to pass us by. I mean, everybody gets frustrated with where, with where they're at sometimes. I know some of you maybe even like you want to be on the road so bad, but you just can't right now. And just finding a way to... Because we were there. Yeah. We were yeah. right there wanting it so bad. And there's always going to be something else that you're wanting. Just like now we're on the road and now we want a baby. And it's like there's always going to be something. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. like you just got to take time and enjoy where you're at. Yeah, I think it's okay to want more and to challenge yourself to have more. But at the same time, find a way. Find that balance of being happy and you know grateful for where you're at. And really savoring that and that, that's what we know that's what we want to do with our life and we hope that we're doing an okay job with it <laughs> but it's always a work in progress we're gonna call it a night have a go team here <laughs> okay hands catch you guys in. later ready hands in one two three Yay! Yay! go team